I'm Greg Wheatley, and my guest today on Inside Wheaton is Alexandra Griffin. Alex is a student in the Intercultural Studies program here at Wheaton, and uh, we're going to talk a little bit about that program, what brought her to Wheaton, and some of the things that uh, she's found since she's been here. Alex, it's great to have you here. Thank you. Thank you for spending some time with us on Inside Wheaton. It's nice to come. Let's uh, start by finding out where you're from. Your accent gives you away a little bit. You're not from Chicago, that's for sure. No, I'm from England, from the Isle of Wight. Tell me where the Isle of Wight is. So if we have a map of <laughs> if we have a map of the UK, in front of us here. Where where do we locate? Um, south coast, little tiny diamond shape, right um, by Southampton and Portsmouth. And uh, you lived, you grew up there. Yep, I grew up there. Um, left when I was eighteen. Went to university in Coventry, University of Warwick, and haven't really been back to the island. From there, I went straight to Ecuador. So yeah, tell me work. about your uh, your journey to Ecuador and why you went there. Um, I went in two thousand and two for nine months and. Fell in love and then went back when I graduated. Um, I was working with HEJB Global, was then HJB World Radio, mm -hmm. now Reach Beyond. It's changed mm -hmm. its name a few times. Um, so I went as an in engineering intern in 2002, went, learned Spanish, did some work in the communities. And then when I moved back out in 2004, I stayed, <laughs> mm. got back into the office. They offered me a job in working, starting projects in the jungle, and I carried on. Interesting. Now, when you say you went there and you fell in love, you mean with the country, or did you? Because uh, you have your husband, husband here. Yeah, today. he's Ecuadorian. So, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was. My host family was with his aunt, and she set me up. Which of the nephews? Very nice. Do I want. Uh, so, that's a, that's another story. <laughs> another story we could tell. That's a that's yep. a great story. Well, so tell me how you got to Wheaton. Um, you're in Ecuador, mm -hmm. and um, what what went into your decision to study at Wheaton? Well, our, our department, we work with community development. Um, and about 15 or 20 years ago, the department did a distance learning course with Wheaton uh, on community development principles. So when we had kind of a new change of staff, they contacted Wheaton about redoing the course in the same format. And we were told, oh, no, that course doesn't exist anymore. Hmm. But we could send down a professor to teach you in, Wheat in Ecuador through the Wheaton program. So Steve Hawthorne, who's a missionary with SIM and a grad of the program, um, he was sent to Ecuador to run a workshop with us. So that was the start. And then every year after that, we did um, one of the Wheaton classes hmm. um, with Steve or with um, Dr. Robert Gallagher. And then when we got to 12 credits, the people who had taken it for credit couldn't do any more. So we were told, well, if you want to do more, you have to come. Apply for scholarships and And so come. you did. Yep. Yeah. So we're here. And you're almost done. So you were telling yes. me that uh, you completely finish officially this summer. Yeah. Because we did that, those credits in Ecuador, it was effectively a semester worth of credit to come. So we came and we, we only needed to come for a year. Hmm. So we arrived last August and we leave this August mm -hmm. with two semesters and summer classes. Tell me, uh, Alex, a about the intercultural studies program. I mean, people may not recognize what that means. When you when you study that here, what are you actually studying? Um, missions. Um, the intercultural studies is all of the community development, um, intercultural communications. And then there's the mission stream um, or there's the TESOL stream. Um, my husband Alfredo is studying the missions, and I've been doing the TESOL, hmm. which is teaching English, teaching English as second to speakers language. of yeah, other, speakers language, yeah. of other languages. Mm -hmm. um, but then all the classes I took in Ecuador were all the development um, type classes. So really, I've got kind of a major in TESOL and a minor in in hmm. communication mm -hmm. in community development communication. And the point of that is to train people to be better. Missionaries, but not just missionaries, I would think, right? Uh, yeah, I think it helps us be better missionaries, um, especially the classes we took in Ecuador. We were able to apply them straight to what we were doing, and I think it did make it uh, make our work much better. Hmm. Um, the first class we did was community development principles, and we applied that straight to our work, and it really did make a difference. It gave us the 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 basis for what we're doing that. We were there for the communities first. We were there for them to develop, not for us to be giving them free things. Um, intercultural communications class that we took, that greatly improved. Like our marriage, our communication huh. with the other missionaries, our communication with the um, with the communities, because we were working, we had both mestizos, like the 
the normal Ecuadorians, and then we had the Quechua tribes, the Shua tribe. So each of them have their own different communication issues, their own cultural elements that without studying it, we didn't realize. And it's yeah. so easy to make errors. So we were applying it straight away. Yeah, that the, the sort of old school model of missions mm -hmm. has given way to this idea that we're not... It's just changed it? mm -hmm. with, with the increased globalization of the world, and it, it's more now understanding other cultures, right? Yeah, and it's yeah different time frames, different models, because the idea of our, a lot of our co-workers have been living in the jungle for 30, 40 years just with that tribe um, dedicated to that one group, whereas... You don't, people don't do that now. We're considered long term. We've been there seven years um, yeah. and we're the long term old missionaries now. So it's completely Yeah, that different is model. different, isn't it? it? It used to be you went and you expected to not yeah. come back and see your family for maybe, maybe a lifetime. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it, tell me, let me just shift gears for a minute here and talk about HCJB. Some people who are older will remember the old slogan, the call of the Andes. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that it's had a couple of different name changes you alluded yeah. to. Uh, tell me about the mission and the ministry of HCJB. Started in 1931 as a radio, and that's probably what it's best known as mm -hmm. um, for radio around the world. But we were involved in community development, which was part of the healthcare ministry um, in Ecuador. They they started building hospitals because well, they brought in doctors to serve the missionaries and then realized that the people around needed medical help as well. So then they, the doctors started working so a clinic formed and then the hospitals formed. Um, so the, they've got Big Quito Hospital um, and then the Shell Hospital has been had been running for 50 years. Um, it's just closed down this year. They're trying to, some other friends are trying to reopen it as a mission hospital. Um, and then community development grew out of that um, as the outreach to the communities. So caravans, um, education, with nurses and water projects. And w what does your work look like in Ecuador? I started as water projects. So I was down in the jungle working with communities, um, building water systems, uh, hygiene and sanitation training. Um, those were isolated communities that we had to fly into. So all of our engineering materials had to go in the airplane. Um, we'd go in for a week or two weeks at a time because the flights were too expensive to just pop in. Hmm. Um, then we had other departments within water projects that worked with the mountain communities, the Quechua's, and then on the coast, or with different groups on the coast. Um, just before I left Ecuador, I was the community development director. So then I was running all of the programs, the caravans, the rural ministries, and water projects. Hmm. Anxious to... Is your plan to go back? We're going back to Ecuador, but not back with the same mission. We're changing, uh, changing roles. We're uh -huh. going to be with OM. Um, and I'm going to be teaching using my TESOL with um, Alliance Academy. Ah, very instead. good. OM is Operation Mobilization. Mobilization yeah. yeah. Um, it, tell me about Wheaton, your experience here, what you've enjoyed about it, some of the strengths of the program. And I love the staff the, and all the faculty. Um, they're very encouraging, um, very experienced. Um, they've really encouraged us in the work, especially as we've been changing this year. So knowing where to look, what to look for, what we're good at. And they're really encouraging us saying, well, this is your strength. You should mm. do this. You mm -hmm. should carry on doing it. That's been encouraging. Um, on the TESOL side, on the teaching, it's been how to be a Christian professional. And that's the real strength. It's not just teaching you how to teach English, but it's how to be a witness and how to um, be a servant um, as you're a teacher. So I think that's a real benefit compared to other programs. Yeah, it seems to me that's another new trend, fairly new trend in missions, is to understand how to be salt and light in a vocation mm -hmm. rather than just say, I'm going flat out as a missionary. Yeah. Um, it, that that model is sort of changing. Yeah, it? the idea that teaching is is missions mm -hmm. um, and it, you're not doing it as a covert. Oh, I'm going to be a teacher and then on the side, I'm going to do right. my, meal, my right. real missionary work. It's Really, the teaching is your missionary work. It's all you're, one piece. Yeah, yeah, the people that you're with day in, day out, they're the people that you can love, show them God's love, um, really minister to, mm -hmm. be a witness to. Yeah. Um, so tell me a little bit, Alex, about if, if someone were listening and saying, you know, I'm looking around for a place to go to graduate school, um, what would you say to that person? I think the, the combination of... Like the intercultural studies and teaching is really valuable. I think if you go to other places, you just get teaching and you can be a brilliant teacher. But to be 
involved in well teaching refugees and teaching in main mainstream schools here it's mission work as well because it's all intercultural so i think the um the intercultural side is really important and i think that's the strength here is the way they um join both programs um the intercultural studies and the tesol or intercultural studies and missions it's not just the how to do the job but it's how to be a christian doing the job and how to do it well and how to do the intercultural part well are you excited about getting back at it yeah Probably going to miss miss the studies too, I would guess. I, you know. Yeah, it's challenged me, and it's been nice to be in this environment. Um, it's a very intense environment, but it's at the same time it's so refreshing to be um, studying rather than um, having to try and apply it all. It's nice to just um, mm-hmm. sit back and get new information, get new things to apply, be encouraged. Um, new challenge when we go back. So um, I feel I'm feeling prepared Mm -hmm. i wouldn't have even considered this type of job beforehand but Mm. i'm feeling prepared now so do you have your job all laid out you know what you're going back to uh um yeah i'm going to be um esl tutor with alliance academy so Mm. the school is um christian english-speaking school but most it's 80 percent non-native speakers so they need the english english um support you're you're the person that's what you've been prepared to to do yeah well, Alex, it's great to get to know you. Thank you so much for spending some time with us, and uh, God go with you as you make this next step. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you very much. Alex Griffin has been an intercultural studies student, uh, finishes up this August at uh, Wheaton College. By the way, if you're interested in the program and would like to know more about it, do visit wheaton.edu, where you'll find that program, intercultural studies, and many others uh, that you can investigate. For Inside Wheaton, I'm Greg Hootley.